not flush. Mark Safe takes down the pot. It's a bad beat for Mike Mizraki as Mark Safe takes a three to one chip lead. We move you back to our featured table now where Jennifer Tilly is pitted against Paul Phillips. At the GQ pairings party presented by Nine, Tilly had some fighting words for her first round foe. Paul Phillips. Hey Paul, do you have a football jersey that says Jennifer Tilly? Uh, I could buy tomorrow. He's shaking, he's trembling, boys and girls. Paul, I'm telling you for the record, I will slaughter you, you are going down. I'm a lot more scared than that. You know, I'd be shaking and trembling too. First time I've seen Paul Phillips be speechless. Phillips with suited 9-6. Just gonna call. And via the outback pocket cam, Tilly also with a suited hand, diamonds 8-4. She checks. And the flop comes with the couple diamonds. Five, queen, queen. Both players have flush draws. Looks like Jennifer's going to bet her flush draw, 300. And Paul Phillips says, you're going to bet your flush draw. I got a higher flush draw. I'm going to raise you 600. 600 for Jennifer to call. She calls the additional amount. Turns a three of hearts. Jennifer checks. And Paul's thinking Jennifer might be trying to trap him here. He checks as well. Rivers a deuce of clubs. Neither player has made the flush. In fact, nobody's made anything here. Paul's nine high is the best hand. Jennifer checks and looks like she's gonna throw her hand away. Paul must feel he has to bet to win. He doesn't think nine high is going to be any good. So he bets 1,200. Jennifer, who was going to throw a hand away a second ago, is having second thoughts. Check raise up to 3,000. Wow, you're check raising the river? Wow, great play by Jennifer. Paul's either got to raise or throw his hand away, and he throws his hand away. Jennifer showed a lot of speed and a lot of heart on that hand. Who check raises the river? It's understood we don't do that. Oh, really? Does this mean I won't get invited over to your house anymore? Great line by Jennifer. I love that line. So with tension seemingly escalating at the feature table, we get our first look at a player considered by many to be the man to beat in this tournament. Phil Ivey won his fifth World Series of Poker bracelet in 2005, and along with that success has come considerable fame. Good looks and poker skills to match mean that Ivy has become one of the most recognizable faces in the game. Poker's cover boy has graced the front of virtually every poker magazine, and that fame hasn't detracted from his success on the table. Ivy remains one of the game's most feared players. Here Phil Ivy matches up against Chad Brown, whose poker career is really starting to take off. The part-time actor had a third place finish at a WSOP circuit event in San Diego last year. For Brown, suited a six, and he raises to 1,200. And Chad Brown can move the chips around. He knows to beat Phil Ivy, you have to gamble. Ace eight off suit for Phil Ivy, he calls. Flop comes deuce eight ace. This is a terrible flop for Chad Brown. Phil Ivey's flop, top two pair, and Chad Brown, who took the lead in his hand, raised before the flop, has got aces. And he's going to continue to play strong. Now look at the master at work. Ivey very casually raises to 4,800. And Chad Brown's problem in this hand is he's playing against Phil Ivey. I don't think he would ordinarily call this bet with A6 in this situation, but he's calling because he doesn't want to let Phil Ivey push him around. The turn brings another ace. Terrible card for Chad Brown. Chad Brown has made three aces, but Phil Ivey has a full house. Ivey bets 6,000. I'm on. Chad Brown's made up his mind. He's playing this hand. He's got three aces. He's going to get the bad news soon. Phil Ivey immediately calls. 
Chad Brown drawing dead to a tie here. I got two outs for the chop. <laughs> the percentages do not add up to 100 because there are two eights left in the deck, and one of those eights would give them the same full house. Whoa. And one of the eights shows up on the river. Chad Brown survives. Welcome to my world. The cards are breaking even. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Ivey thought he'd won the match, but Chad Brown's still sitting down. Gabe, what do you think about that? I think you got real lucky, Chad. That's what I think. Welcome back. Appropriately titled Heads Up, we tried to find the most fashionable player at the red carpet affair, the GQ Pairings Party presented by Nine. We are here at NBC's National Heads Up Poker Championship Red Carpet Extravaganza. I'm Catherine Tappan, joined by the ever-sophisticated Oliver Najat. That's very kind of you, Catherine. We've enlisted the help of a few of these players to get decked out. We're going to figure out who the best dressed is this year, isn't that right? That's right. And for that, we're going to introduce right here Brett Falgren, our GQ style correspondent. Thank you for joining us tonight on the red carpet. Well, thank you for having us. We're very happy to be here. These are great dress shirts. They look great in nine, and they actually have this uh, fabric from Cool Max, which is uh, very interesting, and it helps them stay cool under pressure. Now, Brett, who do you think is the best dress on the red carpet? I would have to say you, Catherine. Oh, thank you. Crowd favorite every time. <laughs> best dressed poker player, a little bit of an oxymoron, sort of like the thinnest sumo wrestler. Mike Misraki, meanwhile, all in with two pair against Mark Safe with suited King Jack. Mark Safe needs a lot of help here. Go! Oh. And a Queen of Hearts comes on the turn. There's a little help. Yes, Mark Safe would win with a heart. And Mike Misraki doesn't like it. Took enough bad ones, no more. Here comes that river card. On the river, a five, five of hearts! Five of hearts. <laughs> Mike Misraki has won the pot with a full house. But Mark Safe didn't realize what happened there. He saw the five of hearts, knew he made the flush, thought he had the best hand, and then it dawned. That happens to a lot of players. When you get the card you want, you somehow see past your opponent's hand. He thought he won the hand for a second. Uh, Mark Safe had a chance to knock out Mike Mizraki, but Mizraki doubles up to stay alive. And back over at our featured table where Paul Phillips is taking on Jennifer Tilly. And this year, Paul already appears much more reserved than he was last year against Bill Helmuth. A-10. I mean, of all the things to beg the poker gods for, A-10, I would say, is pretty freaking low on the list. I'm not! Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> no! Beg it, stop! Don't do it! Stop it! Don't give me a 10! <laughs> Playing Phil Helmer seemed to have a big effect on Paul Phillips last year. Well, Paul Phillips has developed a big chip lead over Jennifer Tilly here. And he's going to make a play without even looking at his hand. He's put about $10,000 in there. That's enough to put Jennifer Tilly all in, and he did not look at his hand. I watched him. He did not look. So on Queen 10, Tilly calls all in. I can't talk about my hand. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I've had it. I'm doubling up on you. You're going down. All right. Paul. Oh, Paul's gone. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah, got a hooded Paul Phillips donning the hooded sweatshirt a la Phil Lack, Jennifer Tilly's boyfriend, and now going into Phil's act from the World Series against no, Johnny Chan. <laughs> I thought Paul Phillips was acting too normal in this match. <laughs> there were some antics there, there yet. Read him in a week. And Paul finally Double looks at his hand, suited 7-4. Come on, buddy, I'll buy you a drink. Jennifer is almost a two to one favorite to double up and have almost 8,000 in chips. Come on, come on, no hearts, no hearts. Flop comes Jack, ace, eight, and two hearts. All right, no more hearts. Jennifer's got to avoid a heart. Also a seven or a four. Oh, that's a burn card. The burn card's a spade, but this is a spade too. It's a seven of spades. I'm going to be Daniel Negreanu. The turn card is a seven it's a of diamonds. seven, but it's not a heart. Turns a seven of diamonds. Yeah, Jennifer didn't want a seven there. Paul Phillips is paired as seven now. Oh. She was trying to call for her cards a la Daniel Negreanu against Jerry Buss last year. A queen, a queen, a 
queen on the river. Jennifer can also win with a nine, a ten, or a king, as long as it's not a heart.